Good morning, Vance Privateer FX. We're back. We're back in Europe. Just got off the plane. Um, 17 Feb to Monday. Week in New York. Holy Jesus. Uh, different, different style of living. Living in America. I always forget. Uh, but it's good to get back. God, I love the people in America. The people are amazing. Uh, the culture in America doesn't suit me, but uh, the people are very special. And uh, learned a lot. Had a good time. Thanks, New York. Uh, enjoyed that. But now back in Switzerland, uh, back in the saddle here, trading from the normal normal office, normal sights and sounds and smells and clean air and clean water and all those Swiss things. Uh, so we're back. Let's take a quick look at the markets today. Obviously, it's a U.S. holiday today, so not a ton going on. Uh, take a quick look at some of the things that we like. This Euro Swiss, as we put on Twitter, is quite interesting. Uh, 106.10, there was a very funny bid down there. Uh, no way of knowing who that bid is. We could all take some guesses as to who we think that might be. Um, and we bullish engulfed on Friday. So Thursday, the bid arrived. Friday, we bullish engulfed. Uh, are we going to make a new high today above 50? Uh, this is now a tradable long between 50 and 70, but got to be long this thing. Based, just based on the flow there. Uh, also, risk on helps, I guess, Euro Swiss. But Euro Swiss is not a barometer of risk on. It's it's really a, a barometer of Euro dollar, uh, which can't get out of its own way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine out of the last ten days. Red. The only green day was basically indecision. That is a. I mean, just take a step back and look at that. Bang. Seems totally overdone to me. Um, I think a lot of this is, we talked about it a little bit on Twitter, big U.S. corporations uh, issuing debt in euros and then hedging out of the euros to, to receive dollars for that debt. This is completely insane for me. Obviously, what happens if euro goes to 130? Of course, uh, corporate treasuries believe that with the euro vol where it is, lowest of all time, euro's not going anywhere. They'll have plenty of time to perhaps hedge this or, or not. I don't know what they're thinking, but this is going to end very badly for them. These kind of things always do. So what, they're, they're gaining 40 basis points, uh, 50 basis points in yield, and they're risking almost unlimited topside. I mean, Euro could go, I mean, Euro can go wherever it wants to go, right? I mean, take a look at the monthlies. All these millennials and people who have never seen shit don't realize that Euro was at 160 uh, before the crisis in 2008. And this thing could go anywhere. And I'm pretty sure after all of this uh, bond hedging is finished this is going to turn but for now it's it, it's it's offered i'm not calling the turn today by any means we're just watching it closely and watching the flows and and commentating on the fact that you know when companies like at&t do these maneuvers you know they have so little euro you know they don't have euro expenses they don't have euro uh Revenues. This is a U.S. company. It just makes no sense. Uh, trying to save 40 basis points. Good job, guys. Some smart guy in Treasury. Looks very smart this week, and he's going to look really, really stupid a year from now. Anyway, take a look at Cable here. Uh, negotiations with Brexit are kind of beginning. I guess uh, the head fella was there uh, speaking in in Europe this guy David Frost he wants a good deal the French are saying you know the French are being French right they're just saying listen you just can't waltz in here and 
expect us to bend over for you. We're going to make this difficult. We're going to make this dramatic. I don't see how this ends well for the UK, uh, but 130.70 is an interesting point now. We have was the high on the 5th, and that was again the high on the 13th, which was Thursday. Uh, Friday we got up to, uh, what's that, high 63. There will be some risk above 130.70, but I think the true risk in cable is, is down. Um, and this has to do with a contentious negotiation. Dollar yen's not doing anything. There's a push and pull here. It's not really risk on, risk off per se. A lot of it, I think, has to do with uh, the state of Japan. Uh, their economy shrank 6.3% in the last quarter. Deepest contraction in six years. Some people are blaming the sales tax and whatnot. Um, so this thing is, that is uh, keeping this thing afloat. So the people are selling in on this uh, growth news. Um, and people are selling... Uh, selling dollars on uh, maybe global fear news uh, which hasn't really materialized of course japan is in the crosshairs on the uh, coronavirus more than many other countries so there's just confusion in dollar yen it's not really going anywhere right i mean we're you can see these are very small bars they're not very powerful bars so we're just waiting 11030 is interesting downside I don't even know I guess down through 10950 gets mildly interesting but we just don't really have much interest in in dollar yen here um, dollars are state of the nation speech what a disaster that was this poor country is just poorly run and it's stuck it's stuck in a in a in a quicksand of incompetence and and graft and strikes and mismanagement hard to see the ZAR appreciate uh, longer term but we survived that and now we're waiting for the budget which will surely be a disaster uh, keep your eye on the ESCOM highlights uh, for further direction but as I say all the time, I just have a hard time buying buying Czar because just watching it from afar, it just, just looks like a disaster, right? I mean, this is your upward sloping trend line, so you're going to see some support down here in, at 70. Uh, but no dog in this fight today. And, uh, you know, I don't want to spend all my time smashing this poor country. They have enough, they have enough on their plate. We don't need privateer to tell them how crappy things are over there. S&P's higher today. Um, coronavirus, I don't know, less contagion. Who knows? Um, indecision Friday, now we're higher today. We're probably just in a range now. We're going to be 80, 90 uh, the rest of the day. 88 and a quarter right now. Not much to do on a U.S. holiday day. What else is out there? I guess Dollar Swiss is going to be topside with this um, Euro Swiss move. This thing is, you know, this is balancing the Euro dollar downside, all these green bars. Um, does this have more to go? Might be. This is quite a little pivot area up here, 98.30. Uh, today's not the day, but something to watch this week as we think, uh, again, we think Euro-Swiss has turned and this is something that we're, we're involved with. Uh, we'll be watching the dollar-Swiss pretty closely. Dollar-Turkey, uh, hard to be long, right? The carry is sort of 20 to 40 pips a day, but... I don't think this is going to get back, back below six anytime soon. So the strategy on, on Dollar Turkey, if you can manage it, is just to buy low ones. Um, 
you have the central bank or you have locals who are selling up at the top of all of these bars. Um, so try and be core long and buy low ones and maybe trade through the carry. It's quite tricky. It's quite tricky being long dollar, dollar turkey. We we got long through six, made a little bit of money, then gave some money back and didn't really trade it super well. But buying low ones in, in, in dollar turkey looks looks sensible. Not a ton else to say, really. Um, again, holiday in the U.S. today looks pretty quiet. Uh, as I was getting on my flight nine hours ago, Euro was 41.2, now it's 43.4. Uh, so not a whole heck of a lot going on. Just back in the saddle here. Um, and wish you all a good sort of holiday trading day. And we'll be more robust about this tomorrow. Catch you guys later. Have a good one. Ciao.